Welcome to Real Vision's Trade Ideas. Today we're sitting down with Dan Russo of Chaken Analytics. Great to have you back. Great to be back. Thank you for having me. So last time you were here, uh, you were looking at growth. Yep. Um, specifically, we're in a slowing growth environment, so investors were going to start paying a premium for growth stocks. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that trade and how that worked out? Yeah, that thesis is, is playing out, and it's still playing out, actually. It's still a theme that I like uh, going forward. I mean, just last week, retail sales numbers came out showed slowing growth, still growth, but the second derivative is kind of slowing down. Same thing with industrial production. And now we have the kind of unknown impacts of the trade war, which in my opinion is now becoming the base case and is no longer the, the bear case for the market. Companies like Walmart and Macy's have come out and started to say that, you know, should the tariffs remain in place for an extended period of time? And should we go ahead and institute the tariffs on the remaining 300 billion of Chinese imports, that's likely going to start to impact the consumer. So I still see growth slowing, not contracting, but slowing both here in the US and globally. So I still like being leveraged to growth themes. All right, so last time you were here, you were looking at the IVW ETF, which represents growth in the S&P 500. Yep. Um, your target was 180, it hit that, um, but since then it has pulled back. Would you consider re-entering this at current levels? I would have to do a little bit more work on it, but I certainly would consider re-entering it. Uh, just given I still see the theme in place, I still see a slowdown, not contraction, and I think that investors will still pay a premium for growth, especially secular growth in the marketplace. But I also think that there are some opportunities to kind of gain exposure to that theme at the sector and industry level as well, which we can go into. Sure, and actually before we go into that, I'd like to follow up on a previous trade you did as well, which was IYT that was focused on the transport sector. Could you give us a little bit of an update as to what's going on there? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, that one was one that obviously did not work out, unfortunately. I'd love to have 100% winners, but that's just not the case. I don't know anybody who does. I still think there are opportunities to the bearish side within transports, but investors need to get more specific. Strength in the rails kind of offset a lot of the weakness that I was seeing in the trucking stocks and push the entire group, quote unquote, transports higher. And, and that's where I got beat on the trade. But if we look at some of the names in the trucking portion of transportation, they still do look weak. And there are some opportunities there that we can maybe address at a different time. Sure. Well, let's start talking about some of the sectors, overall sectors that you do see opportunity in. Sticking with the secular growth theme, uh, a big part of our process at Cheek and Analytics is focusing on relative strength. Right? So we have a 20-factor model for rating stocks. And we use that model to then look for strength in the market at the different sector and industry levels. So where I'm seeing strength right now is in software. Uh, if we look at the ETF, the iShares uh, North American Software ETF, the ticker symbol is IGV. It's been outperforming the market since the beginning of the year, or really since December. So as the market was bottoming on, on about Christmas Eve, software started to outperform. So we look for relative strength in the marketplace as a sign of opportunity on the long side of the portfolio, especially with the market kind of chopping around right now, key support at 2,800 for the S&P 500 with resistance at 2,900. So in this 100 point range, we really wanna be focused on the relative strength and I'm seeing it in software. The IGV is the ETF uh, that plays on that theme. And if we look at the holdings, we can actually drill down and see within the, the holdings of IGV, how many of the stocks are rated bullish or very bullish in our 20-factor model and how many are rated bearish or very bearish. And right now, the ratio is three to one, bulls to bears. So that gives me a lot of conviction that the relative strength in software and the absolute strength in software are likely to continue. What are some of the factors that you look at in that model? So we look at financial factors. Uh, we look at valuation factors. The traditional factors that everybody looks at, you know, price to book, projected PE, earnings growth, earnings surprise, earnings trend. We look at what the analysts are doing. Are analysts raising their estimates? Are analysts cutting their estimates? Are analysts raising their ratings? Are they moving from sell to buy to hold or vice versa? And their 20 factors get rolled up every night and give us a rating on over 4,000 stocks uh, listed in the US. Okay, so in the software, area of the S&P 500, is there any one particular stock that you're looking at? Yeah, actually, I think Microsoft sets up really well right now. Uh, currently, it has a very bullish rating in our model. Uh, it's been outperforming the market for, for quite some time, and our proprietary overbought, oversold indicator is rounding out of an oversold condition and starting to move higher. 
At the same time, our measure of institutional buying and selling, the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator, created by Mark Chaikin, my boss, has been persistently bullish since the beginning of the year. So that gives me a lot of conviction that Microsoft is likely to continue to perform well on both an absolute and relative basis. So currently the stock around $125. I see near-term upside to 135 with potential risk down to 120. So a two to one risk reward in the near term. Although I would note, should the trend be strong, we could easily surpass that 135 level. And what would be the time horizon on that? Over the next three to six months. In terms of risks, is growth picking up a potential risk to this trade? Yeah, we actually talked about that the last time I was here. And I, you know, the risk at that time, I thought, was if this is just a mid-cycle slowdown and then growth accelerates into the back half of the year, then perhaps investors will start to look for some of the beaten down value names uh, and shun some of the, the high growth and secular growth stocks. So far, I don't see that playing out, but it certainly is a risk. Also, the other risk is that this is not just a slow down, growth slowing, but actually growth starts to contract uh, both here and globally. And I, you know, that would lend to an entire risk off type situation across the market. Now, Q1 GDP for the U.S. came in pretty strong. Is that something that you're going to be watching for the next few quarters? Well, the initial report came yeah. in strong. It's a number that's always kind of subject to revision. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. But as I said, last week, retail sales came in, still growing, but at a slower pace. Industrial production numbers came in, uh, still growing, but at a slower pace. So I would not be surprised to see that GDP number get revised lower. Okay. Now, what other sectors are you watching? So the second part of the theme that we discussed when I was here uh, last time was paying attention to yield plays or defensive plays, and a lot of that was in a slowing growth environment. I was making the case that it would be hard for the Fed to raise rates and that interest rates were likely going to head lower. That has largely played out as well, the 10-year yield now below 2.4%. But what's interesting to me is just now, real estate is starting to outperform once again. It was outperforming throughout the fourth quarter of last year. And then as the market started to work higher this year, real estate started to underperform. It is starting to outperform again. If we look at an ETF like IYR, the, R the iShares US real estate ETF, similar dynamics actually to what we're seeing in software in terms of that bull to bear ratio based on what we're seeing in our market, in our model. Not quite two, not quite three to one, but better than two to one bulls to bears, solid money flow telling us that institutional investors are gravitating to these stocks and that the trends are likely to continue. And as I said, it's outperforming the market. So I think the real estate sector is a good place to go looking for long ideas as well, both for yield plays as well as just traditionally defensive plays. What sort of stocks are you looking at in the real estate sector? So we recently highlighted a stock called uh, American Home for Rent. The ticker symbol is AMH, trading around the $24 level, again, has a very bullish rating in our 20-factor model. It's outperforming the market. It's currently oversold based on our proprietary overbought, oversold indicator that we use for timing. Check in money flow indicator is bullish, telling us that institutional investors are accumulating the stock. And there's a pretty good risk reward here. There's solid support at the $23 level, and I see upside to 30 over the next three to six months. So a dollar of downside for $6 of upside uh, looks pretty compelling to me. Do you like investing in the individual stock rather than the ETF, or do you think it should be a mixture of both? I think it should be a mixture of both. In my opinion, I think that you can use ETFs to set up your core strategic positions and then look within those ETFs for individual names that are doing well to give you a little bit of a kicker or some juice to the upside. What do you see as the biggest risk to this real estate trade? Uh, the biggest risk to any real estate trade usually is rising rates. Uh, but in this case, I also think you know a thawing of the trade war between the US and China that alleviates some of the defensive posture in the market uh, would be a risk to real estate. But it's interesting, if I was just reading, uh, over the past 12 months, the three best performing sectors of the market have been utilities, real estate, and consumer staples. So the defensive posture of the market is not new. It's, it's been playing out for about a year. Interesting. Can you summarize your trades in 30 seconds? Sure. Continue to like a barbell approach of owning secular growth, as well as defensive themes within the market. For secular growth, I want to look at uh, software, in particular Microsoft, and for defensive themes, I want to look at real estate, in particular American Home for Rent. Great, Dan, thank you so much. Thank you so much.
So Dan is bullish on Microsoft. Specifically, he likes buying ticker symbol MSFT at 125 with a stop loss at 120 and a target price of 135 over the next three to six months. Dan is also bullish on real estate. Specifically, he recommends buying American Homes for Rent, ticker symbol AMH, at 24 with a stop loss at 23 and a target price of 30 over the next three to six months. Just remember, this is a trade idea and not investment advice. You should do your own research, consider your risk tolerance, and invest accordingly. For Real Vision, I'm Justine Underhill.